So tell me about Flat World. Sure. So we're a um, what I describe as a commercial uh, open textbook publisher. Uh, what that means is that we have sort of three core parts of our model. The first is to publish great textbooks. So in that respect, we act like a traditional publisher. We go out, we uh, recruit a, a leading scholar or teacher in their field to write a book. We professionally develop it and peer review it. Uh, and we develop teaching supplements around it. And all that kind of gets us on the playing field for consideration by faculty. Uh, the second part of our model is where we really differentiate ourselves from everyone else, which is that we publish those books under a Creative Commons open license, thereby uh, enabling faculty legally to adapt it and make it better for their own classroom, whether that means local examples, cultural relevance, inserting their own original materials, curating the web and inserting it in the book. Um, they have the legal control, and then we give them an online web-hosted technology platform, which we call Mio, or Make It Your Own, to actually do that in a point-click, drag-drop kind of environment, so they can easily uh, take advantage of that license and create something better. That brings us to the last part of the model, which is they click Publish for my course, and we dynamically generate on the fly uh, about six different formats of the book. So a, a um, HTML version, uh, we generate a PDF version, we generate EPUB, uh, we generate .mobi for the Kindle, we generate digital Braille and daisy readable formats, uh, and basically uh, this, the model, the business model behind all that is, is a freemium model. We, we offer the web hosted version uh, to anyone in the world for free and they can consume the entire book and then we basically sell all of the downloadable or printed, we also make print textbooks through print on demand, uh, print textbooks. And we find that about 50% are free users and 50% pay uh, and, and given the fact that we don't have a second hand market we actually have a sustainable financial model for the business. And how's it going? Uh, it's going great. We've been in business. Um, we launched our first book in spring 2009. Uh, today we have about 3,000 uh, professors in the United States who formally adopted our textbook in lieu of their current textbook uh, from a traditional publisher. Uh, uh, just shy of 300,000 students in those classes. Um, and we're generating income. Um, so uh, not quite profitable yet as a startup, but on a trajectory to be there. Um, and uh, good financial backing. We've raised about 30 million in venture capital in the past uh, two years. Uh, and includes some really top-notch uh, both venture capital uh, investors and uh, strategic partners. So, uh, so we're we're thrilled with where the business is at. I think there's a real sea change in, in the uh, in the market, and I think uh, uh, really um, uh, approaching it from an open perspective is giving us lots of opportunities to serve customers better. So there are at least two very large bets that you're making. Yeah. One is that we will continue to need and use textbooks, which. Is I'm going to guess a little safer than the, the, the other one, which is, if I understand it, um, the um, uh, people pay for the privilege of not having to read it in a web browser. Is, is that right? I, it, yeah, I think that's a that's a that's a fair bet. That's a fair characterization of two important bets today. Um, and I do think, especially as the textbook becomes less of a book and more of a platform, that first bet is pretty safe. Um, uh, and and. Um, uh, but I think the second bet is a riskier bet, and I think our view of that model is we'll continue to evolve it. I would assume three years from today that uh, print will be on a steady decline and uh, downloadable formats to a, to a local operating system of any sort on any kind of device uh, will also be, uh, uh, it will have been a quick rise and fall and people will be reading through HTML5 web hosted browsers. So I think where our model will continue to evolve is towards more and more premium uh, services around that web browser. So you'll have a flatter web browser experience where it's really just about accessing and reading content uh, and you'll have a much richer uh, experience uh, in, the, um, in, in the premium uh, paid browser experience where you can take notes, share notes with other people, where you can toggle back and forth to a PDF view to get page fidelity. You can print uh, with print integrity on that PDF view. You can download an EPUB file in that premium account uh, to keep on your bookshelf when the course ends uh, as an archive. You can uh, uh, join a community of other students, form study groups, and those kinds of uh, uh, sort of features and services I think will ultimately be uh, uh, the difference. And I think as long as there's a modest price gap between zero and what that premium version is, uh, then I think that we'll still have a, a solid business model there. Uh, so are you concerned that the gap um, in, in functionality 
uh, has educational repercussions so that those can, who can afford the premium are going to get a better educational experience? Um, you know, I think that is a reality, but I think that the, the, the bigger reality is today is that, uh, you know, $150 to $200 for a textbook, you know, we see 60% of students buying a book at all and 40% not buying a book. So I think lack of access is, is a much more uh, ubiquitous, critical problem and a much bigger barrier. So I think we're solving that and, and we may be introducing a new one, uh, but I think it's a much smaller problem and much less important to solve right now. Uh, um, to what extent uh, do your textbooks support social reading and what's your experience with how people are taking that up? Um, social reading, social learning, social studies. Sure. So, you know, I think that um, not, not much. Um, so our objective when we launched the business was to sort of have this core model that I described up and running. And the fourth pillar of the model was to introduce uh, social reading and social learning uh, functions around the book. Um, so we're not there yet. Uh, we have that on our roadmap. And I think, you know, we intend to start with uh, some fairly low-hanging fruit um, on the faculty side, uh, lots of sharing of resources, uh, teaching ideas. Ideas, uh, with other faculty users of the book. Uh, on the student side, uh, note sharing, uh, forums to be able to connect with one another in a Q&A environment, uh, you know, being able to, to, to uh, give us instant feedback on content. Um, and, and I think we'll be embedding some social functions, whether they're, you consider them classically social or not, I'm not sure, but uh, embedded assessment where we can get uh, item level analysis of, of what concepts students are doing well on uh, across the board, which ones are not, and that gives us a content improvement feedback loop on the uh, on the book content itself. Um, so that's kind of the next wave of social development. Uh, it's great to uh, meet somebody who's uh, doing well with a uh, Creative Commons based business model. So great. Yeah, congratulations. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks.